The Doctor's Daughter is, no doubt, the weakest script of Series 4. It's a mess of high concert ideas and in-jokes, mashed together and then cut down to fit into the 45 minute time slot. It's a fundamentally flawed episode that has some elements of note, but a whole host of others that just fall flat on their face. It's a speed bump in the fourth series of the revival, and one that I'm keen to discuss. I suppose the real positive of the episode is it doesn't really cause too much damage in the grand scheme of things. It's just kind of forgettable and very much filler. The Doctor's Daughter is an episode that threatens to change the Doctor fundamentally to turn his sports car into a people carrier, but it's quite obvious the show isn't going to change so dramatically and so quickly. It's also an episode which features a Martha subplot that feels very tacked on, with lots of cutting away to her own adventure with a supporting character who doesn't speak English and never develops a personality. Only so it can underscore how absolutely terrible the universe actually is if you happen to be Martha Jones. Okay, there's lots of other little problems here, but none of them are inherent to the premise. The fact that the hat aren't defined or the twists are foreshadowed enough could all be sort of trimmed with a tighter script editing, or by expanding the episode, or even just trimming some of the useless fat. However, the biggest problem with the Doctor's Daughter is the fact that it brings back an old companion for an episode where she just basically runs around a quarry by herself, seemingly wandering into the episode's climate by sheer chance and that the episode is built around a life-changing situation for the Doctor that would con- be conveniently washed away by the end of the credits. It's all, it's all rather pointless, a closed circle that really offers little in the way of satisfaction. Even the explanation for the TARDIS flying away at the end of the poison sky feels a bit lazy. Jenny was the reason for the TARDIS bringing us, bringing us here. It just got here too soon, which then created Jenny in the first place. Paradox, an endless paradox. Time to go home. I mean, I like paradoxes, don't get me wrong. David's destruction of the third series, as it was a giant paradox, was really clever. Here, however, it feels like a bit of an afterthought. Even the title of the episode, Doctor's Daughter, feels like nothing but an empty and headline, headline-grabbing episode title. And then there's Martha. Martha is a character who hasn't always been well served by a time on Doctor Who. The fourth series brings Martha back for five episodes all in all, in a nice bit of world-building, Proof of how Davies has developed the world of Doctor Who, given the show a vast network of supporting co-stars to help flesh out the world around the Doctor himself. It does strike me as a bit odd that she spends most of the episodes separated from the Doctor and Donna, given her unreprecated crush on the Doctor, who was made out to seem, and how important it was for her to get over it. It feels funny that the Martha has spent very little time with the Doctor here. Compare, for example, how much time Rose and her supporting cast get to spend with the Doctor in Journey's End. It's a very weird dynamic, and it makes you wonder what the point of Martha guest starring in the episode really was. She didn't want to go with the Doctor at the end of The Boys in the Sky, and she doesn't want to go with him at the end of The Doctor's Daughter. There's no real arc there, no real change. Then again, the fact that the only thing that Doctor Who could do to wrap up a character arc in the end of time, part two, was to pair off with Mickey Smith, suggests that the show never really had any idea what it was going to do with Martha when it comes to getting rid of her, but that it was nice to have Freema again and around. The fact that Martha's mid-season return for his most gratuitous piece of Davies and nostalgia in the season is probably a good sign. However, her involvement here feels ill-judged and misguided. I'm Dr. Martha Jones. Who the hell are you? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't hurt me. Sorry. Given this is the episode that stars the fifth Doctor's daughter, Georgia Moffat, and the tenth Doctor's future wife, directed by a woman who shares the same surname but is no relation of the second Doctor, it feels weird that Martha's involvement should feel less so out of place. The Doctor's Daughter feels like it should be a celebration for the show's history, given all the converging elements, but it just doesn't quite work. It doesn't really work at all. Moving on to Jenny. Jenny's character feels far too abbreviated here. As a result, the dialogue is just terrible, forcing Jenny to pretty much state the show's subtext bluntly in order to get it across, because there's no room to properly convey it. I have a body, I have a mind, I have independent thoughts, she explains. How am I not real? What makes you better than me? I mean, it's a great idea, but there's just no room for it here. The Rebel Flesh and the Almost People, although not very good episodes in my opinion, might be two very flawed episodes, like I said, but they cover a lot of the same ideas effectively and, and allow more room for it to work. There are some great ideas here though, don't get me wrong, and in its better moments, the Doctor sort of was like a big idea, allegorical science fiction programme. One thing I do like about the episode is the seven days revelation, which is quite brilliant, even if picking seven days feels a little too pointed. The notion of entire mythology exaggerated and distorted in a week, though, feels Chinese whispers. It's fascinating, even if the show feels a little bit too much like an atheist soapbox, as the Doctor explains the source is just a cocktail of stuff for accelerated evolution. And also, near the end of the episode, he tells the armies, it's nothing mystical, it's from a laboratory, not some creator. 
It feels a little blunt, as if the war between the humans and the Hath could never have been more than just a vaguely re religious mysticism surrounding the source. There's nothing wrong with using the setup to explore the relationship between religion and science, but it feels rather clumsily grafted onto the end of the script, that it's just really floundering under the weight of so many other concepts already. Still, there is some decent character work here. Donna is portrayed, yet again, as a character willing to stand up for the Doctor. When the Doctor protests that Jenny isn't really his daughter, Donna points out that not every everybody conforms to his own idea of parenthood. This is a nifty inversion of the common scene where the Doctor challenges the Companion's own assumptions about what challenges their preconceptions, like the way the Night Doctor challenges Rose in The Unquiet Dead, for example. There's also something resembling a good idea to be found in the questions that Jenny raises about the Doctor. She's constructed from part of him, so his reaction to her arrival is obvious and extensions of her own securities and issues. Much like the previous episode, The Poison Sky, the Doctor's daughter offers a somewhat cynical exploration of the Doctor's pacifism. In The Poison Sky, he was a pacifist, who ultimately relied on soldiers carrying machine guns. Here he discovers that his daughter is the perfect soldier. The Doctor has a tendency to be a bit of a hypocrite, and that is example. A second ago it was peace in our time, now you're talking about genocide. For us, that means the same thing. Then you need to get yourself a better dictionary. When you do, look up genocide. You'll see a little picture of me there, and the caption will read, Over my dead body. Obviously he has a bit of a selective memory. The Doctor is just as capable of genocide as many of his foes. His ability to alternate between the extremes of gen genuine pacifism and incredible brutality is shocking. And the Doctor's daughter does a half-decent job drawing on that character conflict. You keep insisting you're not a soldier, Jenny remarks at one point, but look at you drawing up strategy like a proper general. She has a point. His method of war might be unconventional, but he's still capable of waging one-man war if it deems necessary. The Doctor is taken aback by her, her suggestions and trying to stop the fighting to protest. Jenny responds, isn't every soldier? The relationship between the Doctor's pacifism and the death that follows him around, and which he occasionally enables, has been the subject of quite a few clever episodes, such as Human Nature and the Family of Blood last series. The Doctor's daughter is far from brilliant, but it does hit this theme, although just not as coherently as those episodes. Also, the fact that Jenny survives all this doesn't change anything at all. The Doctor never discovers that she's alive. He never has to take responsibility for her. He never has to act like a father towards her. Instead, he's briefly confronted with the prospect that he might be a father again in an episode that is already overplotted and overcrowded. Don't get me wrong, David Tennant does the best he can with the material, but it's just hard to invest in an arc that goes from I don't want to be a dad to I might not actually hate my child to this child who didn't exist a few hours ago is now dead. Overall, I'd say The Doctor's Daughter is a bit of a failure and a, and a largely substantial one, to say the least. However, it's also an episode that has a lot of ambition behind it and some good ideas, but just one where the flaws have been embedded since its very conception. It just doesn't play out very well. It's the weakest episode of the series for sure, but it just doesn't feel like the sort of bland nobody was trying too hard failure as episodes such as Fear Her, but it is still bland nonetheless. I give The Doctor's Daughter a 4.5. Keep quiet and open the door. I'd like to see you try that. <laughs>